Can we call the meeting order? Mr. Bahu? Here. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Mr. LeMay? Mr. Narco? Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Here. We rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic which stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Turning the roll call, right? Yeah. Look, can I have a motion to open the uh, public hearing? Motion. Second. Uh, second. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Mormon? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Yeah. Right, I'm going to ask Superintendent Davis and uh, School Business Administrator uh, Mr. Knight to present the FY25 budget. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be here this evening to present uh, Greater Low Technical High School's FY25 proposed budget. I'd like to inform everybody that. Uh, as we began this uh, budget process, it was developed based on the governor's house budget proposal and data and input from our administrators, teachers, parents, and community partners. Our budget is centered around improving student achievement in order to develop confident learners and skilled workers. I'd like to start off the budget discussion by talking about the Student Opportunity Act. Uh, as you all know, in uh, 2015, uh, the Senate and Governor approved a change in funding to the public education formula, and this bill provided an additional investment of $1.5 billion into schools over the next seven years. Uh, this was revised to six years, and we are currently in uh, year four of the six-year implementation process. In this year, we were required to develop a new Student Opportunity Act plan. About $700,000 uh, of the current 2.6% budget increase, or about one-half of the net school spending amount of this budget uh, is uh, dedicated to our Student Opportunity Act initiatives. Any questions? Uh, the, the Student Opportunity Act is aimed at tackling inequities specifically for school districts like us with higher percentages of low-income students, English language learners currently known as multilingual learners now, and special education students in order to uh, close the achievement gap. In this year's budget, we received a $421,908 increase to Chapter 70 aid. And the budget that I am recommending to the committee this evening will be $57,981,480. And this includes more than $1,477,455 in additional spending or a 2.6% increase over this year's budget. On this, on this slide, I'd like to discuss the current uh, changes to the foundation budget rates per pupil. Uh, the governor's budget proposed is a direct result of the revised foundation budget formula, which reflects an increase per pupil expenditure to add additional uh, funding to schools with high numbers of English language learners, special education students, as well as low income students. And I'll just go line by line talking about uh, the increases to the uh, per pupil rates. So the base rate for a vocational student was raised to $16,860.33. This is a $386.32 increase. Uh, this rate increase is actually down from last year, but there was an increase, but it's a smaller increase than our increase was last year. For a special education student, we receive $31,333.62, which is a $590.40 increase. 
also this rate increases down from last year. For English language learners, we received $3,221.08, which is an increase of $342.42. Also, a rate in also this rate increase is an increase, but the increase is down from last year. For our low income categories uh, that were added in FY21 that did not exist before and continue to be, ma be maintained in this FY25 budget, we have 56% of our students that fall into the low income category 10, uh, for which we receive $7,163.59 which is an increase of $623.06. Again, a rate increase, but this increase is down from last year. This uh, slide just explains the overall foundation budget rates. Uh, these, again, are based on the new rates of pupil expenditures set by the state and our current enrollment. Our foundation budget increased by $1,362,953, which is a 2.6% increase in this year's overall budget. Uh, as I said earlier, this is year four of a six-year SOA plan implementation, and we should expect roughly the same budget increase over the next two years. The $1,362,953 is all net school spending required funding that needs to be spent each year in addition to future budget increases. Any questions on the overall overview of the foundation budget? All right, so the proposed revenue that's going to support our budget this year comes from um, mainly from state funding. You can see down toward the bottom here, that's made up of our Chapter 70 uh, aid, which is based on our uh, per pupil spending that we've discussed previously and that is our required net school spending amount. Um, and that's $37,647,191. Uh, our estimated transportation reimbursement for next year is up $300,000 from the previous year to $1.5 million, giving us a total state aid of $39,147,191. Um, the remainder of our budget really comes from the assessment to our communities. Our assessments are up $755,542 uh, to a total of $18,634,289. Um, and then to cover some of the expenses that wouldn't fall under net school spending eligible, uh, we are also including an excess to in deficiency use uh, or our savings use of $200,000. Um, so those three categories combined give us our total revenue number of $57,981,480. Oh, I'm sorry. Our budget priorities. Uh, this year, our budget is focused on... I'll start with category one, is refining our curriculum and instruction to expand opportunities for student voice and choice and strengthen ownership of their education, as well as opportunities to make connections between their academic and vocational coursework or an industry recognized credentials and participate in real world work experiences. Uh, some, I'll just highlight some of the uh, initiatives that we'll be conducting uh, under this priority. We are going to continue to develop and implement project-based uh, learning lessons, as we have been doing over the last two years. We're going to be expanding our Project Lead the Way courses into the medical uh, program areas. We're going to be expand, expanding our dual enrollment to include Chemistry 1 and 2 with labs with UMass Lowell. Uh, we're going to be offering, uh, continue to offer student leadership opportunities, and we're going to be working with our students who demonstrate a level of proficiency in uh, literacy, which is listening, speaking, reading, and writing in English and one or more other languages so that those uh, students can acquire the seal of biliteracy. 
and we're going to be working on the development of curriculum uh, for our uh, to-be-determined new veterinary science program. So those are just some of the highlights in this area of, re of refining curriculum and instruction to expand opportunities for our students. The next area would be to ensure the class size mitigation and ad adequate course offerings and schedule flexibility for all students. Uh, we're going to be expanding and refining our our e English language uh, education co-teaching model for core academics. We're going to be expanding our online foreign language offerings to include Spanish, Chinese, French, and German with teacher support. And as I said earlier, we're going to be adding uh, a new technical program, which will be veterinary science. We are in phase two of the application process. And uh, we hope to know by, uh, by the fall if this is going to be accepted by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. You have joined the call, but you are the only one. But we, we have made plans and to begin to develop curriculum and to begin to look for an instructor who would be able to teach uh, the exploratory for the 25-26 school year, 24-25 school year. Uh, the next area of focus would be allocating staff and resources needed to effectively meet the academic, vocational, social, and emotional and behavioral needs of all our students and create a vision for engaging our families. We'll be hiring an instructional coach, an ELE instructional coach. We're looking to hire a a family liaison and, and to open up a family resource center. Here at school, we're looking to hire a veterinary science instructor, uh, and we'll, we're looking to hire two science tutors for the 24-25 school oh, year. You are the only one here. And that's, oh, we're not finished. <laughs> we're going to be maintaining educational technology and resources and equipment as we always do to ensure that our programs are, are keeping up to date with industry and the global tre trends. Uh, again, we're going to be purchasing equipment for our veterinary science program and purchasing some uh, equipment, technology and media equipment for our eight new modular classrooms. And then lastly, uh, we're going to be providing professional development and coaching to our staff in order to sustain high quality instruction to meet the needs of our multilingual learners and deepen learning for all of our students in order to ensure educational equity and opportunity for all. So we're going to be continuing to provide our instructors with professional development in project-based learning, continue to provide professional development on school safety and threat assessments, providing PD on de-escalation strategies on literacy across the curriculum and on co-teaching for special education and multilingual learners along with many other professional development opportunities but those are just some that I wanted to highlight and uh, last but not least uh, we also added some additional uh, coaches to our athletic programs <laughs> Uh, because of the increase in participation in our athletic programs, we had to we have a need to add some additional coaches. So our spring track, we've added an assistant spring track coach. Uh, for our indoor track, we've added an assistant indoor track coach. And uh, we also have added the addition of two unified sports, weight room, which would need one coach and one assistant coach, and unified track, which would need one coach and one assistant coach. And those are some of the budget priorities for the 24-25 school year, focused on students and their achievements, both in academic and vocational education. And the expenditure that supports those initiatives, uh, broken down into these various categories, um, we see the biggest increase 
almost always going to be on our instructional line, which is where our teacher salaries, supplies, materials, all of those items are taken into account. Um, additionally, we'll see some notable decreases in um, some of our fixed charges that was um, renegotiating things like insurance and um, making sure that we get the, the best rates possible in those areas. Um, and then uh, just some minor moves of a little bit of a decrease in um, programs with other districts. This is school choice as most of the vocational schools have um, filled up their enrollments. They're not taking outside um, member students. Um, so our financial responsibility to schools like Neshoba that used to take some students that would have lived in Dracut, um, Dunstable, Lowell, or Tingsboro um, are reducing as they, um, they age out from being choiced into those schools. And in this year's budget, we did not include a, a contribution to the OPEB trust fund. Um, so we'll see a, a notable decrease in that line as well. Um, but across our categories, again, the, the instruction really drives this budget, um, mm -hmm. and that makes up, you know, almost almost the uh, the whole of our one point four or one million four hundred seventy seven thousand four hundred fifty four dollar increase. Um, some notable expenditures that aren't related to instruction or personnel. Um, our utility costs have kind of crept up over the last couple of years. Um, I think when I, when I started here, our electricity rate was nine, nine cents per kilowatt hour. Um, the most recent contract when we went out to bid that we could get was an 11.27. Um, so it's a significant increase to lines like that that make up some of our bigger expenses in the budget. Um, transportation, regular ed and special ed continue to increase. Um, I will say it was nice that we're locked into um, a contract with our transportation provider right now because word on or word around school business officials um, <laughs> is that when you go back out to bid right now, you're seeing double digit increases on the good side of things. Um, so our extension year was under a five percent increase for our transportation. Um, so that number stays relatively um, stable, even though it is one of our more notable increases year over year. Um, and then also we've seen a little bit of an uptick in uh, classroom technology and software costs. Um, some of this is the related to Chromebooks. They used to be uh, a very, I would say, economical solution that didn't offer much from a computing standpoint, a computing power standpoint. That the, and the manufacturers have seemed to go away from that model, and they're becoming more like a laptop now, um, minus some of the storage capabilities. <clears throat> And then some of our softwares have also seen pretty significant increases, um, particularly around cybersecurity. We just had our, a renewal of our firewall and um, some of the other re related softwares that are involved in our network security. And those those costs are um, they're, they're staying they're staying up there right now. <laughs> so Mike, we should charge the kids two dollars for the Chromebook now instead of one. Uh, maybe on the way out, that's uh, a good that, idea. Let's that whole twelve hundred will break us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, this slide talks about our personnel expenditure. As I said earlier, we're looking to hire an instructional coach for English language <clears throat> education, a family parent liaison uh, to, uh, to add to the current uh, liaisons that we have at, with the thought of having a family resource center uh, located in the main uh, lobby of the school building a veterinary science instructor, and two science tutors. And uh, part of that, the advanced manufacturer savings would be supplemented to the veterinary science teacher. Um, as I mentioned earlier on the revenue slide, we are going to be using uh, $200,000 out of our excess and deficiency or savings account in this year's budget to meet in, or to make sure we can uh, expend in areas that wouldn't be net school spending eligible. Um, the two main categories are our Medicaid uh, filing, which is done through UMass Medical, um, is not a eligible service that can be charged in net school spending, but we do get reimbursement for that. Um, so we do need to fund that out of excess and deficiency where the reimbursement closes out in this in the following year um, so it's kind of a net 
zero. Uh, it's actually a net positive position for us because the, the filing is only uh, charged at about 4.1% of the total reimbursement. So uh, we get a significant amount of that back. Uh, and then also capital vehicle purchases um, for transportation of students to work sites, those types of things aren't included um, as net school spending eligible. So we're gonna use a little bit of savings to continue to update our fleet. Um, and I believe after this year we'll be done with all of our older 15 passenger style vans and we'll be all in either mini buses or a newer safe style uh, 14 or 10 passenger van uh, that can be used by the different departments and or athletics groups. Is, is DESE, and I know we, we asked this in the past, because <coughs> transportation obviously the buses are an issue and who's after school sports, we're using these to get our kids there. And we reach back out to them to see if we can include that to net school spending, or are they just shut the door in our face and that's it? Uh, nope. So I, I actually made the the case less for athletics, more for job site right, exactly. job site Same transportation thing. recently, and and I actually I think the way I framed it was you're telling me I can pay a, a outside provider with net school spending funds to drive our students to and from a job site for work based training. But I can't buy a vehicle to do that on my own. And the, the response I received was, "Yep, you, you understand correctly." Um, so it might not make uh, I, I, might, it doesn't it make a lot no of sense, sense to me. No. But it, right, it makes no sense to me at all because they can't provide us the service right now. Yep. Um, yeah, we can't use it for net. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and they do provide some of them. Uh, I know yeah. our health and medical students do go out on a contracted bus, but um, by and large, the other groups that go out to job sites, uh, carpentry and uh, and the like, generally drive themselves. And, and there are much smaller groups going out. Yeah. Uh, I was just now, I guess my next question is is it saving us money by instead of like the medical students going out? Is it cheaper for us just, okay, we're buying it, saving the money on the contract and doing that? Um, it might be, but the, See, nice. there needs to be a willingness to drive from okay. from the individual who's running that group. And um, that's very, fine. Varied levels of comfort from individuals, teams, coaches, et cetera, on that, that's whether fine. they wish to drive or not. Yep. Okay. I understand. So to sum it all up, uh, our operating budget for FY25 of $53,784,885 exceeds required next school spending amount of $53,584,885 by $200,000 from e excess and deficiency to cover non-school net school spending eligible expenses. Starting with our operating budget of $53,784,885, this amount must be spent on education to meet net school spending. And the following are expenditures. The transportation costs of $2,927,000, debt service of $1,269,595, uh, An OPEB uh, is zero, uh, with a total budget of fifty-seven million nine hundred eighty-one thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. Our sources of revenue, uh, which is needed to sustain our proposed total budget, the minimum local contribution, which we assess our cities and towns, which is set by the state, is $15,937,694. Our transportation assessment of $1,427,000. And our debt assessment of $1,269,595, a total, uh, an assessment total of $18,634,289 amongst our four towns. Along with our Chapter 78 of $37,647,191, uh, our Chapter 71 transportation aid of $1,500,000 uh, $1, and our excess and deficiency of $200,000. So that, that is our budget uh, report for the FY25 
budget. Are there any public participants wishing to speak on the FY25 budget? I'm seeing none. Uh, the vote for the uh, FY25 budget will take place during the regular school committee meeting at 6 30. Uh, we're going to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Kitchen? Yes. We'll take a brief uh, recess and begin the school committee meeting at 6 30. Thank you. Thank you.